Let's start with what we hope, Gary, is a bit of good news. It looks like we might see a humiliating back down from Chris Bowen. We've got the US uh, yeah, yeah. You know, backing down from their, their vehicle emissions. It looks like this tax, this ute tax, could be altered in some way. I hope it will be. We're expecting it this week. But do you think his back down will be big enough? Uh, <laughs> this bloke has got to find a reverse gear on a lot of things, Peter. So that is a very leading question. But, I mean, just the other week he was announcing all these new electric charging stations across the Nullarbor and they're all powered by diesel fuel. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. You uh, can't look, make I, it I up. think on so many fronts, Chris Bowen will be front and centre of the epitaph written for the Albanese government. He is on a crusade to drive up the cost of living for everybody. And it's the fuel you put in your car is one thing. The price of electricity, well, it's doubled for many Queenslanders, for instance. We used to have such cheap electricity and so much of it, we had to invent new ways to use it. They gave away uh, air conditioners into people's homes in the 70s in this state. They electrified a rail track up to Rockhampton just to use the excess electricity. And, and now... We, well, we just don't even have a coal-fired power station always reliably working. So uh, this bloke is driving us all to the brink of economic ruin. And so, yep, mm. fix up fuel uh, standards. But I think he should just simply go because he's destroying us all. Chris Bowen, but our Anthony Albanese is allowing it all to happen. So it is the Prime Minister's fault, Peter, no matter which way you look at it. I tell you, if I was back in the Coalition Tactics Committee working on questions for question time, I'd be wanting to have plenty of questions to Chris Bowen because every single time yep. he's up, he's a gift uh, to the other side. I think he just is toxic uh, to the Labor brand and he, he just reminds people of Absolutely. all these broken promises, uh, particularly on their power bills. What about this one, Keith? You you pointed this one out to me and I, and I couldn't believe then to watch Richard Miles get up <laughs> to his feet today in question time and lead with his chin crowing about the fact the government is going to spend $4.6 billion of our Australian taxpayer money building nuclear reactors at Rolls-Royce in the UK and then bring them here and put them inside <laughs> our submarines. They say they hate nuclear power. It's way too expensive to have nuclear power. But they're, they're actually basically proving your point, isn't it? Yep. Oh, Peter, the most extraordinary part of this was that the question before that one was Chris Bowen banging on about how they won't have nuclear power in Australia, followed by Richard Yes, I noted that. <laughs> saying, how the, saying how the taxpayer will invest nearly $5 billion and that money will go into logistics, supply chains, training, developing, building reactors, training lots and lots of people, including apprentices. But guess where? All in the United Kingdom. Uh, and, and that's great. We need this. This is part of the Virginia-class subs and the nuclear program. Then they'll take that reactor and they'll take it from the UK and they'll take it to Adelaide. And in Adelaide, in the capital city, they'll put it in a submarine. That submarine, when operational, will then travel around the world. It will go to ports around Australia and it'll have an Australian paid-for nuclear reactor in it, but not one that you can use for electricity mm -hmm. on land. And that was certainly the quotes we were putting across to Mr Bowen. Does that reactor generate electricity on, on a submarine? And it absolutely does. Yeah, and how can you be against <laughs> nuclear power on land but for nuclear power on sea? And I think this is where they're really going to come unstuck uh, between now and the election. Yeah, I hope absolutely. they come unstuck. Uh, Gary, Gary, put your Queensland hat on there for a moment because around the country we okay. are looking at what's happening up there with the Brisbane Olympics bid. I can't follow it anymore. It's, it's got Claire. more contortions than Nadia Comaneci. There, I'm showing my age there. But, but what the hell is going on? <laughs> are we going to have the Olympics in Brisbane? Uh, and happy birthday for the other day, Peter. Let me rescue you from the age point. When I was 17, 47 years ago, I went to the opening of this QE2 stadium, as it was called. Her Majesty drove around in an open vehicle and waved to all of our school kids. Uh, I was from McGregor High School, my, my old school just down the road from this stadium. The building is 46 years old, uh, 48 years old, actually, because it's 47 years ago it was open. And this is apparently the brain snap of the current Premier... And everybody's saying, oh, yeah, no, we'll just reuse the facility we used to have. They wanted to do a cut-price Olympics. But hang on, 
The whole idea of the Olympics, the reason why the various mayors of South East Queensland wanted it, it was about building the infrastructure mm. that South East Queensland needed, not for 2032, but for 2045. But no one has put together a generational plan for the infrastructure we need. And a lot of Queenslanders are just throwing their hands up in the air and saying they can tell you the colour of the curtains in the VIP room, but none know how they're going to build a stadium. And every time you turn around, there's another delay. We have wasted over a 1,000 days. And then on top of that... A thousand days since it was announced, the CFMEU want their share. There's a six billion dollar CFMEU tax on construction right across Queensland. Everybody's price of building things has gone up because of them. Stephen Miles won't say anything about it. And David Crisofulli has now been set up for a problem should he win the election because he's going to have to take the unions on. We we have to fix up the building unions in Australia, and particularly yeah, yeah. here in Queensland, or nothing is going to get built. And it's it's a big issue that David Crisofulli is going to have to get his head around because Miles is just presenting it to him. And talk about the hospital pass, mm. my stars, what a mess we've got ahead of us. I don't know whether the games will actually ever go ahead. That's how bad it is.